Hey, it's Jim Bergman with MeasureQuick. Had a couple of customers call and we had a little conversation going about, uh, you know, what do I look at when I'm doing a combustion analysis and what are the most important elements of it? So I thought we'd just take a little bit of uh, time and, and go through that today. Um, I've got the blue flame just set up here. I've got it calibrated. I've got it just sort of sitting in the cabinet. I've got the, the blue flame app up. Thought it'd be a little interesting. We don't show that app much. So I thought this time we'd show this app uh, primarily for this video. So one of the first things when I'm doing a combustion analysis, I have Val step over here for just a minute. Before I, I have the furnace always started. So if you look down here, you'll see the, the burners are going already. I've got the, uh, the burners running. There's no need to test a appliance that um, from the very first second it starts, especially on a gas appliance. The next thing that I usually do is I do a quick visual test for draft. So you can see I got this lighter lit here and you can get an idea how strong the draft is. And this is probably, you know, around somewhere between 200 and 400 of an inch of water column. It doesn't suck the flame out very quickly, but it does pull it in. So it's telling me that I have a negative draft on there. And an 80 plus furnace, you know, this has got a draft inducer motor. And it does, the idea of the draft inducer motor is to create a uh, equivalent of a natural draft on the heat exchanger. It is not to create a positive pressure in a flue pipe. So the, the draft will, on this will always be negative. And even though we have manometers and things like that that can read draft, um, I'm still a big believer in a visual indicator of draft. So now I've got my draft verified and my furnace running. Now I'm gonna actually start to do my combustion test. And before we do that, you know, we, normally what I do is uh, if you turn your iPad sideways, I'm going to go ahead and, and start capturing this just so she can, she can see this. Get the microphone on here. All right, so one of the things you can do if, if you have an iPad, you can turn it sideways, you can swipe up from the bottom. And if you swipe up from the bottom here, I'll try and open this again here, you'll see that you can pull up uh, your Pages app. And what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to pull it up. Oh, sorry pull it up and I'm going to sweep it over to the side here. So you pull it up, you wait till it flashes and move it over to the side. Now what that's going to do here, and I'm going to swap this down here, is it's going to bring up the combustion guide. So in my in my application, what I did is I stored that copy of that applications guide there. You can download it at AccuTools.com. Also, if you need it, you can tap on the uh, quick start guide right in the in the blue flame app and pull it up. But I like having a separate copy of it sort of side by side. What I've done here, then I sweep over to the mid efficiency appliance is 80%. And then if you tap on the gear on here, you can actually edit the order on here. So you'll notice that I have pressure in inches of water column, I have excess air, I have O2, carbon monoxide, and I've sort of mirrored these readings that are uh, on the uh, typical readings for this gas appliance. So I, I have readings that I can reference right next to my actual combustion reading. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to show you a couple different things. On the, also on the graph side, I have stack temperature, O2, and I have CO air free. And so what we typically want to watch is for these readings to stabilize, but I want you to also see what's going on as we make some measurements here. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and we'll start doing a combustion test. I'm just going to hit the start button. You notice right away we're getting 20% oxygen, no CO. We're getting a stack temperature on here, but things like our gross efficiency aren't calculating yet. And that's because it takes time for the analyzer to get the flue gas all the way up and into the analyzer. And I can see we're starting to get some gross efficiency numbers on there. And I can start to look at what's going on. Now, if I go to my graph here for just a minute, let's start with O2. You can see we started about 20% oxygen and you can see our O2 is dropping. We're down to about 10% oxygen right now. So that would be like having 100% excess air at 10% because we've we, we have enough oxygen, if it was like started at 20 and we went down to 10, we have a, enough oxygen to completely support the combustion of another furnace, right? And so we're actually dropping down below 10 now. So, you know, we'll be close to 100% excess air, probably 80, 90%. We'll go back to the table here for just a minute. You can see that our, um, let's see here, if we have excess air in a, oh, you would do at the top there, 73%. So we have 73% excess air, 8% oxygen. Our CO is 38. Our stack temperature is uh, 241. Our gross efficiency is 84. So let's go back to the graph for just a minute. So what I'm watching here before I really want to evaluate these readings is I'm waiting for my stack temperature to stabilize, which you can see it's uh, still climbing a little bit. 
my O2 to stabilize, and my CO to stabilize. And you can see now my O2 is sort of flatlined down there. That's looking really nice and stable. And my CO air free number is also stable. Stack will continue to rise a small amount the entire time we're doing the testing because the return air temperature is rising. So that's a pretty common thing that we're going to see on there. So I'm going to go back to just my table for just a minute here and take a look at my readings and start comparing them down there. So my excess air should be between 25 and 75 percent. I'm at 69, that's good. My O2 between 7 and 9, I'm at 8.6, that's good. My CO air free, and that's with that CO at 0% oxygen, right? That's an air free number, less than 100 parts per million, we're at 37. Our stack temperature between 240, or, or 242, we're looking for 325 to 450. Now, this is a Goodman, it's a 80 plus, it's got a really, really low temperature rise. And I've been meaning to contact Goodman and ask him about this because this thing always runs a low stack temperature, which is also why it's running a higher uh, efficiency because it's running at 84, we're looking between 78 and 82 is where we want to see, and this one's running about 84% uh, gross efficiency on there. And that gross efficiency number, it's sort of interesting because we really don't want that approaching that 84, 85% range because we have a higher uh, probability of condensing flue gases in the stack, right? So, and that's something we don't want to have happen. And so now I can see my CO reading and the CO reading at 23, that's just a raw CO reading. That's what you use to protect the sensor. We always want to protect people by watching CO air free because the excess air in the flue gas dilutes the CO. So if we want an apples to apples comparison, right? Then we want to make sure that we're using undiluted CO as our uh, apples to apples comparison on there. What we're ultimately trying to do, we're, we're putting in air and we're putting in carbon in the fuel. We're trying to convert all the carbon and hydrogen in the fuel into carbon dioxide and water, right? And if it doesn't make it all the way from carbon to carbon dioxide, it gets the intermediate step, which is carbon monoxide, which in this case here, um, we're gonna see, you know, as a small amount of, of the, of the, uh, of the fuels going through on burn, that's why we have 21% uh, carbon monoxide. Now, if we go to this graph here for just a minute, and let's, let me uh, get the, the book out of the way for a second here, and we'll turn this sideways just so we can get this graph a little bit bigger here, and Valerie will probably have to rotate this when she does the video, which will be interesting to see. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna adjust the fuel pressure for a minute. Now, you can see my CO line's fairly stable, my O2 is fairly stable, and before we go ahead and adjust this, uh, o this uh, fuel, if I adjust the regulator up, what we'd expect to see is an increase in stack temperature, because we're gonna have more heat, a decrease in oxygen, because we're going to uh, be consuming more oxygen now because the amount of air that's sort of fixed going through this burner, right? Now come in here just so you can see what I'm looking at here. Right here, this is this brass piece up here is called the spud. And you might have to get a little higher just so you can see if you, if you can't get up there. So this is called the spud and, and the spud's where the orifice is at. The gas is shooting down the center of the burner, which is a venturi, and that's where all the primary air is entering the center of the burner. So the gas and the primary air are entering here. Around the burner, if you look back in here, this is where the secondary air enters in. And so the only thing that controls the amount of fuel and air mixture on this is the gas pressure. As I increase the gas pressure, I get more fuel. And because this is a constant speed fan, it's gonna pull in a, um, the same volume of air, you know, independent of what's going in here. So we'll go ahead and we'll dial this down. I'm gonna go to my high regulator pressure for just a minute. And let me get the screwdriver sunk in here. Just gotta find the slot. Come on, there we go. I'm gonna dial up the fuel pressure just a little bit. You're gonna hear it change in sound. And you're gonna see what's gonna happen here in just a second here is our O2 is gonna to start to drop. Now again, it takes a minute for the fuel to actually reach in into the, uh, into the appliance. Now you can see that O2 is dropping from 10% or well, eight, uh, let's say probably eight and a half percent and we're down, down to, towards 8%. You can see also what happened is our CO air free reading is starting to climb, right? And CO is starting to climb quite a bit on there. So this small increase in fuel pressure has taken our CO from 40 parts per million up to, we'll see where it rescales here, up to 80 parts per million just by adding additional fuel and we dropped our O2 down to 7.5%. You can also see our stack temperatures rising here. So if we go back to our table, you can see now we have less excess air, right, because we've effectively um, 
we're, we, we're down to 50% excess air from about 70-ish before because now we have more gas, so more of the air is being consumed, which means we're gonna have a lower O2 reading. We ended up with a higher CO reading. Sometimes it'll go up, sometimes it'll go down. In this case, we have uh, uh, more fuel and uh, that's going through on burn. Our stack temperature increased a little bit and our gross efficiency went up. And the efficiency went up because we have a lower excess air reading on the appliance. Now, if I lower this back down here, we'll just back it back down a little bit. We'll go back to the graph again. You'll see that the O2 will start to dial up. And uh, again, it's gonna take just a minute for it to read. So there goes my O2, climbing back towards the eight, uh, eight and a half percent we're at before. And there goes my CO back down. And obviously you can see my stack temperatures on the way down also. So with a furnace like this, the key things that you're looking at when you're making adjustments you really have to pay attention to the input on this. So we'll go back through and reclock the meter on this, but the most important elements of setting up a gas furnace are correct fuel input, which means we physically have to go back around and clock the meter and see how much input we actually have to get the fuel pressure matched between to the appliance. In other words, between 3.2 and 3.8, this is a this appliance is a nominal 3.5, but it's got an allowable range of 3.2 to 3.8. We'll make sure we have exactly 60,000 BTUs of input. That gets our fuel air mixture correct. And then the next thing we, we have to make absolutely certain we do is we have correct temperature rise across the appliance. Typically we want to be towards the center to middle of the temperature rise range. And once we get all those things done, then we'll go through and, and wrap up the commissioning, uh, commissioning process. High static pressure and low airflow are an absolute killer of these types of appliances, along with too much input. You can also, though, damage these appliances with low input on the appliance. So there's nothing, uh, there's no good pressure but the correct pressure on an appliance like this if you want to make sure that it's going to last. And obviously, you want to do things like making sure that there's no chemicals in the combustion air zone and things like that. But when we're setting up an appliance like this, again, first thing you do is get the appliance fired up. Next thing is check your draft. We'll clock the meter. We'll verify the combustion's correct. We'll make sure the temperature rise is in the right range. And then we'll finish up the rest of the commissioning process. So hopefully this gives you a little idea of how we use the, um, how we use the, uh, the, the Blue Flame Analyzer and uh, the AccuTools app. And uh, I overall think it's a pretty little slick process. Uh, really do like the Blue Flame map. I use it quite a bit um, when I just want to see the readings in general. Uh, otherwise, obviously, this is a, a MetroQuick compatible product and it works great with that also because it'll show you if things are in the right range if you don't want to pull out the manual. So hopefully this gives you a little bit of insight in what we're doing in the, in the uh, how we do a combustion, anal uh, sorry, how we do a combustion analysis. If you got any questions or comments, please make sure you leave them below and please like and subscribe to the channel. This is Jim Bergman with MeasureQuick. Thanks a lot for watching.